I'll, I'll tell you how it starts. This is what I read this morning. Josie has gone to buy school supplies with her mother, and her mother, out of nowhere, um, starts hiding in the cat food aisle, is, you know, hiding behind the cat food. And Josie, you know, knows she's seen someone from high school because her mother always hides when she sees someone from high school because she was pregnant in high school, and it was really devastating to her, so. Josie, you know, looking through the cat food aisle, who could it be? Is it one of those former cheerleaders who was mean to my mom? Is it, you know, that math geek guy we ran into once who made the lame joke about quadrat quadratic equations? Who could it be? And she said, I just see this old, these two old fogies fighting over shampoo, and the mom tells her, those are Paul's parents. Those are Paul Tucci's parents. So the parents of the boy who um, have just showed up in the, in the grocery store. So Josie has just seen her grandparents that she's never known. So she shows up at the party where her best friend, Liv, is waiting for her after having seen her grandparents for the first time. So here we go. Josie, where have you been? Liv is standing on Melanie Jaffin's pool table. I've been waiting for you, like, forever. She's wearing a black feather boa, a red velvet smoking jacket, and a bikini. This place is insane. Did you see Michael Palomino? No brain cells left. Seriously, bumbling idiot. Get up here with me. Liv, stone cold sober, starts river dancing to Eminem, and she couldn't care less why anyone in Mel's basement, what anyone in Mel's basement thinks. This is why I love her. I've known Liv since we were six years old, when we first met on the swings at our neighborhood playground. She introduced herself as Olivia Sarah Weiss Longo, told me she had two daddies, and said my hair looked like Snow White's. How could we not be best friends? I need to talk to you. I'm screaming because it's the only way to be heard. The music is so loud. Liv leaps off the pool table. Is everything okay? Are you, wait. She grabs my hand. Follow me. As we wind our way through the bodies, I notice how good everyone looks tonight, tan and happy. Lots of people stop to hug us and scream things like, oh my God, you guys, how was your summer? Can you believe we're juniors? Rob Van Tyne, Hamilton name, <laughs> decides it's his mission in life to get us to drink the punch he has made, with the orange slices floating on top and the mango chunks stuck to the bottom and, oh yeah, a gallon or two of vodka. We graciously decline and press on. Finally, we make it to the upstairs bathroom where every surface is coated with shaving cream. Yup, it's that kind of party. Melanie's father, who bought this lake house after he ditched Melanie's mother for his 24-year-old paralegal, and who only gets to see Mel every third weekend, feels so guilty he lets her do whatever she wants. Huh, Liv says, looking around the bathroom. Impressive. Then being the fantastic friend that she is, she grabs a towel to mop the shaving cream off the side of the tub so we can sit. So what's up? Well, I say, there's been a Tucci sighting. What? Yes. What? I know, I say, and tell her everything. When I'm finished, my feather boa wearing, pool table hopping, river dancing, best friend puts her hand on my arm. Holy shite, Josie. Liv prefers shite to shit. She thinks it makes her sound British. I know, I said. Do you think they move back? What? I shake my head. No, I'm sure they're just visiting old friends or something. How do you know? What? How do you know they're visiting old friends? I don't know, they seemed I mean, all they bought was shampoo and honeydews and milk and like toilet scrubbers. Toilet scrubbers? Yeah, so. Liv raises an eyebrow. When was the last time you bought toilet scrubbers as a hostess gift? <laughs> That's when it hits me. Oh my God. Liv says, exactly. Then she launches into one of her arguments, honed by many an afternoon of middle school <clears throat> debate club. Think about it, Joe's the karma. If his parents move back, he has to show up sometime, right? For Thanksgiving or whatever? So unless you're planning to like never go to North Haven again, which would mean basically never buying anything decent, you're gonna run into your dad. Which, come on, isn't that what you've always, he's not my dad. Live not, okay. He'll never be my dad. Right. He's just the guy who inadvertently gave me half my genetic material. He's, that's all he is. Yes, Liv says, bobbing her head. She used hot rollers tonight, and her curls are bobbing, too. I know she's humoring me. I know because the Paul Tucci argument is as old as our friendship. I know because the worst fight we've ever had was the time Liv emailed her hero, Dr. Steve, the world's most annoying TV therapist, suggesting a father-daughter reunion show. I saw the email on her computer, and I went ballistic. 
She didn't do it to hurt me, she said at the time. She did it to help me. She threw out a lot of little gems like, listen, Josie, it's important to know the full story of where you came from. You may not like the choices your father made, but that doesn't mean it's not worth knowing. It doesn't mean you shouldn't forge some kind of relationship. Relationship? How about an acknowledgement of my presence on Earth? Let's start with that. <laughs> OK, Josie, Lip says now. Her eyes are soft on mine. Whatever you want to call him, I just think you should be, you know, mentally prepared to run into him. She's probably right, but I don't want to talk about it. I don't even want to think about it. Thankfully, this is the moment when Jamie Mann bursts through the bathroom door in her orange tie-dye tankini, both hands clapped over her mouth. Incoming, Liv murmurs just as Jamie projectile vomits all over the floor, miraculously changing the subject. <coughs> so, if you want to know what happens to Josie and her dad and her mom, <coughs> April 6th, I'm conducting a little experiment to see if I can get every reader to buy this on the same day, whether I go automatically to the New York Times bestseller list. Uh. <laughs> so we'll see, maybe you can help with a little, get the word out, April 6th.